Hey guys, um, <clears throat> so obviously um, in Australia at the moment, everywhere you're seeing information about the gay marriage <clears throat> postal survey. Um, most of you have probably already received your letters to vote. Um, um, I'm making this video to really kind of explain how it feels um, from the perspective of someone in a same-sex relationship to be having this happen and talking about why um, I think a yes vote is important and what a yes vote to me is really about. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll answer any questions um, along the way. Okay, so there's the first things um, I want to start talking about in the kind of arguments that I'm hearing all over the shop from the um, the no campaign. Uh, it's really important when people do voice their opinions, um, whether they're yes or they're no or whatever it is they say, they understand that they're human beings um, who are reading them, human beings who, who it is actually their life, They um, it is part of their fibre and who they are and every word that people write, um, it can actually be really hurtful and it is going to a real person. I think that's really important. Um, some things I've read this week, uh, one of them has been that seeing gay people kiss in public makes them sick. Um, I've read about how it will cause bestiality and pedophilia. Um, I, I can't even – about, you know, the impact it has on children. I've just read so many uninformed, uneducated comments um, about what would happen if gay marriage would become legal. Um that it's hard to be diplomatic, I think, when having to speak against that. Um, and then, you know, people say that they're changing their vote from yes to no because of the way people are responding, you know, to no voters. I think that's a real cop-out as well, and I'll go into that <clears throat> at, um, up later. So some things I just want to point out um, before, because I'm actually going to talk a lot about my own experiences in this video, um, about kind of what I've gone through in the past, well, since I've been dating um, females probably past 15 years. Um, yeah, and just probably my perspective of it. So the first of the things I want to say is one of the big arguments that people talk about is the way it impacts kids. <coughs> Sorry, and um, people having kids. Firstly, if you actually do all the research, rather than just read one study of a sample of about 20 people, there's actually no research has, um, or studies have proven to show that, it, that two parents of the same sex will impact the well-being of the child. It's actually really kind of been shown from all um, the, the studies that it's about the type of parenting that's given. Um, as I said, you will find studies that show different. They are a very small sample of people. The, the sample um, has been, the people in the sample has been very selected intentionally and it doesn't actually go into the previous, um, I guess, upbringing of the children in that. So, for example, you could have had someone who, a, a child that grew up in a heterosexual, heterosexual parents, um, it might have been a real volatile, tumultuous relationship. Um, the parents split and then they kind of, you know, one of the partners then went into a same-sex relationship and then they're looking at the well-being of the child then, however, not looking at how the previous relationship has actually impacted that. So, you know, people who do look into those studies, they really need to be aware of everything that's actually involved in it and not just take it from face value. Um, yeah, so that's one point I want to make. Um, another point that gets brought up a lot is the religious argument. Firstly, um, I just want to say that I know that not or religious people who are against same-sex marriage. There's I don't know, some really supportive religious people, and I don't like when people kind of assume that all religious people are against same-sex marriage. It's kind of the the, the um, real stereotype that same-sex marriage. Um, sorry, the stereotype that all Muslims are terrorists. It, it's an incorrect stereotype, um, and so you know I'm, this isn't a target at all at religious people because like I said not you know there's so many really supportive religious people and that's great um 
I guess the area that I want to come from with the religion is to point out that, number one, we are a secular country, which means that religion is actually not able to determine our laws. Um, and, you know, I could go so far into the Bible, look at other elements of the Bible. We could talk about Leviticus for days, for those that do know the Bible, um, and <laughs> look at some of the laws in Leviticus and, and what people are following. Um, we could compare the Old Testament to the New Testament, you know, etc., etc. Um, but in the end, I think that is irrelevant because we are a secular country. And, you know, I think the overarching message of religion from my knowledge of it from growing up in, um, in a church and religious household is that it's about acceptance and love and how we treat other people. And the Christians that I know, and I believe I know really good Christians, um, they're, they're, they're real message to me is that it is about how you treat others and I think that's really really important because people when they are getting into these gay marriage debates online and they are often come from a religious angle they're not necessarily showing that's you know the, the side that most how how most religious people are and it's creating that real negative stigma attached in in the same manner that of what um I've been told that the way some gay people are responding or so and creating real negative stigma towards the, about the LGBTQI community so I guess the message in that is just always consider how you speak to someone um, I've tried really hard during this whole debate to not not be nasty, kind of take the argument as it is and kind of um, be very logical about it. In saying that, it's very hard not to get really hurt by it. Um, my letter did come the other day and I, I wasn't able to open it and um, something, I guess, about with me is when I find something really emotional or something really hurtful or painful, I can't, I really struggle to talk about it and... It's almost like I can't get the words out. Um, I've become very good in my life at blocking things, I guess. Um, and it had been a long time since this had happened. So when that letter came, I felt like I couldn't open it. I couldn't go near it. I just, that there was too much emotion connected to it for me. Um, a lot of anger, a lot of sadness. And I obviously did open it and tick it and just got it out of the house. But... Yeah, it was, um, I found it a really painful thing. It's this whole debate and the media and, and you turn on the TV and you see ads at the moment. Um, it is really difficult because every time I, I you know, turn around, you're, I'm hearing something that is essentially putting down the fabric of who I am, of my family. Um, and that, you know, that's really, really hard. I think that a lot of people aren't realising or whether they realise and don't care that it is, it does impact, you know, as much as you can say, um, be strong within who, who you are, once you're confident with who you are, it won't hurt. We're human and words do hurt. So <clears throat> there's that angle. Um, I think that they're the main points I want to talk about in terms of the arguments that I'm seeing. Um, oh, one of the main other big ones is about the constitution. Um, you know, marriage has always been that way, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you probably know, most of you now, that the uh, John Howard did change it in 2004 to a man and woman, woman at that point anyway. So, okay, so now I'm going to go more into the personal stuff. So for me, a yes vote. It isn't about a wedding. It isn't about a marriage. Um, it's about feeling accepted by people. The way the government has done it by, by doing the vote and I guess using us as pawns in their game, um, it's really changed the impact of whether there's going to be gay marriage or not and it's become more about being accepted by society, um, feeling like you know you are okay, it's okay to be you. So, a um, bit, bit of my background, I grew up in a religious family. My dad still is um, very religious. Um, homosexuality wasn't something that I even feel like I knew about. Um, 
I guess like if someone was gay it was kind of a novelty um, wasn't something that it wasn't part of my life I don't remember ever in the church being told it was wrong um, I don't remember at home being told it was wrong I it's just something that it, it never came up and that it's just I'm making also this point in that a lot of people you know they also say that you know it's going if we teach um sorry I just had to move a message um I think a lot of people you know kind of think that if you have people say gay people have children they'll become turn gay etc cetera, etc cetera. like I'm saying um I grew up in a really religious house it, it was not it wasn't spoken about um I remember being a teenager and I started to become a bit aware about sexualities that they did differ. I read a book in high school um, about a gay boy, and at that point, sorry, <laughs> my cat's there. Um, at that point, being gay became a really intense fear for me. Um, I was really scared that I, could, I would be gay, and it was actually my biggest fear. Um, when I would pray at night, I'd often pray for God not to make me gay. Um, I used to get like in my head these images and I'd um, I'd put an image of a, like a naked male and a naked female just standing there and I would say to myself that's right that's right and I'd have an image of a naked male a naked female and naked female and I'd say to myself that's wrong that's wrong so it's almost like I was trying to I don't know um, make myself feel straight be straight like something um sub maybe subconsciously I knew uh, I thought I, I didn't speak to any friends about this. I guess I thought it was normal to have these kind of thoughts until obviously as an adult now, if I mention it to people and I say, you know, you know, when you're young and you kind of convince yourself that you're straight and that you tell yourself it's wrong to be gay, but it's not something you speak about. Um, and when I do say that to people, they just kind of like, no, that's, that's not thoughts that I had growing up. So I'm like, oh, okay. Um, there's other signs, you know, that I can think of about growing up, like, um, and thoughts I had, guess, obsessions with females. Um, I probably had my first female crush when I was, say, 16. I was always, I remember by about year 11, there was, um, by then some girls were starting to come out, be bi, and I was, um, without me knowing these people were bi or gay, I was kind of really um, fascinated by these females and like kind of always wanted to be around them. Again, having boyfriends at the time, I didn't identify any of this in myself. Um, and then I think when I was about 16, I had a best friend and we became really, really close. We worked together and I started to become really jealous of her boyfriends. <clears throat> I wanted to be around her all the time and... Once again, it's I, I just didn't put two and two together. I mean, it wasn't – I mean, I, this was the late 1990s. It wasn't something that was really talked about. There wasn't really – no one was out at my school. You wouldn't be out at school because you'd probably get beaten up. I remember when um, I was in about year 10, a rumour went around, went around about two girls kissing and we kind of like felt like they um, had the plague nearly. There's kind of there's a stigma around that. So it just – it wasn't something that – it just it, – it wasn't part of my world. So when um, I was 19, um, I still just kind of had boyfriends, just, you know, had – that, you know, females I'd been jealous of and just considered it normal. Um, I, that's when I first fell for a female. I met a first proper lesbian and I fell for her and that was my first girlfriend. Um, it was a really, really difficult time of my life. Um, I guess there was that fear, that real huge fear of coming out. I can't really explain the fear that is it's um like it's all you can think about you start to question if anyone's going to accept you if people you know are gonna still want you in their life um I think it was hardest coming out to immediate family especially um part of my family members were and are religious I'm not going to talk about what happened when I came out. I mean, that's to, with each family member. That's a, that's a personal story between me and them. Um, 
but it, it was yeah it was a really really difficult time and I don't think that I probably had the support that I needed looking back now um, but obviously I got through and I'm okay um, so I just want to talk about some of the things that happen in gay relationships um, some of the things that you, kind of you wouldn't notice so things have improved a lot mind you I'm talking about say yeah, 12 14 years ago um, I remember like if I had a girlfriend I, I, I didn't feel comfortable going anywhere touching them you would get looks people would kind of turn around and stare um, you get would get comments um, I remember I wasn't even comfortable at this point holding hands with a girlfriend in the car because people would still look and um, it's always been something I've struggled a lot with. I'm getting better in my relationship now at being confident with public affection. Um, but yeah, it is something that's, that's taken a lot of time. And even still, you still kind of have that thought in the back of your head as is someone looking? Is someone saying something? Am I being judged? Um, and you know, and, and as I said before, um, I know it's meant to be, sorry, could you just hold on a sec? Um, like I said, I know it's meant to be about being secure within who you are, but, you know, when just everyone, when you're questioning what everyone is thinking and saying about you, it does become more challenging in that. So... Um, just maybe if you think about something in your life that one of your biggest insecurities and you had that basically um, plastered on your face for everyone to see every time you went out thinking that's what they're going to judge you about, that's that's probably akin to it. So walking around, um, especially during real, when things, homophobia was more rife in society, that's what it would be like. You'd be walking around with in your mind a sign on your head saying this is why I think you're going to judge me this is what I'm insecure about and everyone's seen it you, you couldn't hide it um, the only times I'd be really comfortable with being myself and I felt really happy was if I was um, in a gay club or maybe um, on what's that street in South Yarra where like gay people hang out I don't know if it's the street anymore at least be like the gay street near Peran. Anyway, that street. Um, it's near Chapel Street, I don't remember. You kind of feel more comfortable around there um, and at gay events. So um, I also used to feel comfortable when I played women's footy. People often say that, you know, it's lesbians that play footy, um, whether it's – that's obviously not the case so much. Oh, actually, it probably is a bit now. Um, but I think that's more about being in a community where you felt accepted and it was really, really important. So since then, every time, and I've gotten a lot better at this now, probably the past five years um, is when I've really started to overcome this. But since then, every time you come out to someone, there's always that fear. Um, you wonder if they're going to accept you. Um, and, and, you know, 99% of the people do. And... I think, and it's because of kind of the the comments that you see that people that people write about gay people, about gay families, that real negative comments that you get that makes you go always second guess before you come out um, what they're going to say. And I've become much better at it now. Um, I used to, I think, nearly dike myself up a bit more so I wouldn't have to come out. So it would be a lot easier and so like I, I would automatically know if that person how they would feel about it um I know my partner at work she experiences <clears throat> quite a bit of homophobia um I've been really lucky in my job people have been really supportive <clears throat> I've only had one or two things happen however I know like I've got a really supportive team um that would back me up so this is where I'm kind of coming to um, with the whole point of this video. Um, I think that a yes vote, and I don't mean yes in the way that's going to allow gay marriage, I mean yes in that we will see that we're supported by our community. 
um, it's going to change that that subtle second guessing yourself, always um, wondering if you're going to be accepted, that fear that you're being looked at. Um, and as I said, that might probably isn't even happening, but enough stuff has enough things have happened in the past 15 years for me and I know older gay people who um have been out since the 70s and they've seen friends get um beaten up they've had they've seen a lot of things happen and it's knowing that that those times have passed and that when I walk down the street I'm feeling that people I'm walking past would accept me um and no vote so if we get majority come through as no there's going to be that always that fear and doubt again um that hey I'm not who I am is not okay for society um and I get that people say that you know they're not homophobic or they support gay people they just don't support gay marriage but this is the only way that I guess for us as a the LGBTQI community to kind of get a gauge on where people are at, how they, what they think and feel about us. Um, so it's more than marriage. It's more than just the certificate, which obviously is really important um, in terms of legalities and I know um, in terms of medical issues, etc. But it's about, like I said, it's about knowing that you walk into a crowded room and you're not guessing how many of those people aren't accepting you because most of your country has said that they don't believe that you should have the same rights as them. So that's that's why it's really important to me. Um, I see kind of real subtle homophobia around the place. You know, the language still, that's so gay language. Um, I hope that one day that can all change, that... As someone, especially I guess a young person, like when I was young, can hold hands with their partner in the car and not be worried that they're going to be even judged doing that. Um, so I just have notes here. Oh, okay, so I just wanted to point out um, that I know a lot of people have changed, have said they've changed their vote from yes to no because of the way people have responded um, when they've said no. I mean, sorry, about um, by people, way so people have responded to those who are saying no um, and they're saying that they're feeling attacked and they're feeling bullied, etc. Um, I'm Firstly, I'm sorry to people if they've felt that way by anyone. It's not okay for anyone to feel attacked or bullied or um, yeah, di discriminated against. I guess the only reason I can explain why there's is um, people are responding quite brutally and heavily um, is because this is a really emotional driven thing. I mean, people are attacking the core of who someone else is, and that's something that, that you need to people who are who have already know and what they're saying. You need to remember that this is the essence of a person's identity that is being attacked, and that's going to create a lot of emotion in someone and a lot of anger. And um, I guess that's when, you know, a lot of vitriol starts coming out in that means. Um, I think also this has been 100 years odd of pain from a community and years of knowing in the past we were considered something, it was considered something that was a mental illness, um, people being beaten up. You know, I've had friends walk down the street and have eggs thrown at them. Like, comments, like, even if I'd be at a club, just with a girlfriend, just sitting with her, I have had would have guys come up and say things. Like, you need to understand that this is, for some people, a lifetime. Sorry, this should be yelling in my house. Um, a lifetime of being treated badly. And to have, then, the people, the, the no voters... Um, come out and say more things. I think that's why people are struggling to be diplomatic in how they're responding to that because, like I've said, it's an, it's an attack on the core of who you are and it's also a build-up of 30 to 50 years of hate. 
So I, I do find it a little ironic <laughs> that people who have spent 20 years um, putting down a com- gay, the gay community and now really upset when someone's calling them on it, they're um, kind of saying that they're being bullied. I don't think they can you can really know what it's like to feel bullied until like I said my have had you know friends had eggs thrown on you have I've had one case when I've been walking in the shops with my partner we were just shopping together we weren't touching each other we had a man start following us um and then come up to us and start to ask us if we knew Jesus Christ that our lifestyle wasn't okay um you know <laughs> when those kind of things have happened you kind of kind of go, really? So you're um, not happy that people are calling you on basically your discrimination, but this is what we've experienced for years, and it, it does seem a little ironic. Anyway, um, does anyone have any questions before I go? Like, I'm happy to answer anything because I haven't – I mean, I can answer by a message afterwards, but if you have any questions you want to know – about my experiences, um, I feel like I've covered most things. Mm, no, okay. Um, often though, when you do live videos, the questions don't come up till a bit after. So, um, but yeah, I feel like I've covered most things anyway in this video um, as to why a yes vote's important to me. Um, to help kind of you understand what it's like rather than just, oh, that's okay, Mel, Um, to understand what it's like rather than just kind of coming from that one perspective of it, I guess. I think it's really, really really important that we try and understand life from each other's perspectives um, and that we respect everyone, we respect their opinions, and I think that's probably my main message is in this, if, if you vote yes, if you vote no, whatever you vote, um, please be respectful of everyone. Please understand that some people have had a have been through years of pain because of this. Um, I know people go, oh, they're still arguing about this, I'm over it. Well, think about if you're over it, think about how much we're over it because it's something that is... I don't know, I can't even think of the words anymore. I've been talking for too long. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Um, Like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to comment them, and I'll try and get back to you. Okay, see ya.